This is ABC 7 News Weekend Edition. Your Suncoast News. We're here for you. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Adam Cellini. You saw it right here on ABC 7, the battle between nominees with his political life on the line. Donald Trump faced off tonight for a second presidential debate with Hillary Clinton. Trump's campaign in defensive mode after the comments recorded in 2005 were made public. Trump is heard boasting about making crude sexual advances at women and getting away with them. Republicans have been backtracking on the candidate, even his own running mate. ABC's Karen Travers is in St. Louis tonight for the debate and joins us now live. Good evening from Washington University. If you were expecting fireworks tonight, you got them. For two days, Donald Trump laid out his debate playbook, making it clear that he felt that Bill Clinton's past was not only fair game, but a critical part of this election. Well, the key question was, would Donald Trump hold his fire like he did in the first debate? That answer came very quickly, and the personal attacks did not stop there. Straight out of the gate, the tension was clear. No handshake between the two bitter rivals. Donald Trump under fire for that 2005 audio recording with his crude comments about women. This was locker room talk. Uh, I'm not proud of it. I apologize to my family. I apologize to the American people. Hillary Clinton with days to prep her response, saying Trump is not fit to be president. I think it's clear to anyone who heard it that it represents exactly who he is. And then 15 minutes in, Trump goes nuclear, accusing former President Bill Clinton of sexual misconduct. If you look at uh, Bill Clinton, far worse, minor words, and his was action. Hillary Clinton not when willing to engage. Like that, I am reminded of what my friend Michelle Obama advised us all. When they go low, you go high. The two candidates battled it out over Clinton's emails and private server. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. And Trump defending himself against reports that he may have avoided federal taxes for nearly 18 years. Did you use that $916 million loss to avoid paying personal federal income taxes? For of course I do. Of course I do. She complains that Donald Trump took advantage of the tax cut. Well, why didn't she change it? Why didn't you change it when you were a senator? The debate ended on a positive note. Asked to name one nice thing about their opponent, Hillary Clinton said she respects Donald Trump for his children. And Donald Trump said Hillary Clinton is a fighter who does not give up. Well, let's not expect that collegiality to last very long tomorrow. It's back to the battleground states with Hillary Clinton in Ohio, Donald Trump next door in Pennsylvania. And for sure, this debate tonight will loom large over the campaign trail. Reporting live from St. Louis, Karen Travers, ABC News. All right, Karen, thank you very much. In other news, tropical cyclone Matthew is bringing what's described as a record-breaking flood to North Carolina. Governor Pat McCrory says the state could see its worst flooding since Hurricane Floyd in 1999. Matthew caused significant erosion of the beaches. All roads are passable at this time, and crews are working to restore power. The property data firm CoreLogic estimates that insured losses will be between four and six billion dollars. That estimate covers storm surge and wind damage. Here in Florida, the federal government approving portions of Governor Rick Scott's request for a major disaster declaration in the state. Washington officials approving the request for debris removal and emergency protective measures. But as of now, funding for individual assistance or permanent work to government buildings, roads and parks has not been approved. The funding is available to state and some local governments in eight Florida counties. FEMA says it's conducting damage surveys in other areas and more counties may be added to that list. And contributing to those FEMA surveys will be some local pilots with the Civil Air Patrol, which has set up a temporary base in Sarasota. The civilian auxiliary of the U.S. Air Force will be conducting aerial photographic surveys of the eastern coastline from Key Largo to the north of the Florida-Georgia border to aid FEMA and the other state agency efforts. The Sarasota base located along SRQ Airport's runway sent out four flights today and will be coordinating more all week. Civil Air Patrol has also activated bases in Tampa and Punta Gorda. Many of the pilots are from the Sarasota area. Most of our 
crew that is operating now is coming from the west coast. This allows those that are on the east coast that have been affected by the storm to do their recovery efforts. The Florida wing was activated one week before the storm hit the state and generated more than 8,000 images in its initial flight on Friday. Now let's head over to Steve Newman for a first check on our local weather today. Steve. Adam, you were mentioning you want temperatures in the 80s. You like that. Well, you're going to get it all this week. Look at this dry air. You hardly ever see not a single radar echo from rain anywhere in the state of Florida, but that's what we're getting tonight. And even if we zoom into the local level all across the Sun Coast, it is dry, 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 and the air is getting drier and drier and drier. Currently at the airport at 77, 2.65. It's going to go down into the 50s tonight and tomorrow, allowing temperatures to cool off into the 60s overnight and only be a little bit warmer than uh, right now for day daytime temperatures. Our high this afternoon, 92. We're not going to be in the 90s for as far in the future as I can see on the computer models. Last night's low, 75, and you can see the highs and lows. Here is the predicted temperature trend overnight, and look at this. We haven't been in the 60s for overnight lows. I think we'll bottom out at about 66 tonight. The complete forecast, I think you're going to like it coming up in a few minutes. Adam? All right, thank you, Steve. The Manatee County chapter of the NAACP releasing findings today of an extensive records request from the Bradenton Police Department. The records take a look at statistics from 1988 to 2015. ABC's, ABC 7's Kate Flexter was at police headquarters where those statistics were made public and has those details of the findings. The local NAACP chapter joined the Black Lives Matter movement and activist group Answer Suncoast right here at the Bradenton Police Department. They're all speaking out about what they perceive to be racial injustice. The records cover nearly 30 years, containing the numbers for written warnings, traffic stops, and officer-involved shootings. The president of Manatee County's NAACP, Rodney Jones, said he made the records request because he felt it was necessary. With everything going on across the country, we wanted to just get a simple evaluation of how our local law enforcement agencies were performing in not only the minority communities, but in the communities at large. The records show that 50% of the suspects in those officer-involved shootings were black, compared to the city of Bradenton's overall black population, which is only 16%. That's according to the most recent information from the U.S. Census Bureau. Community members, we've long had complaints about the city of Braden and their practices in law enforcement. It just surely confirmed what we knew. Among the crowd at Sunday's announcement was NAACP member Corey Holmes, who was shocked by the numbers. Certainly, it certainly opens my eye to believe that, that certain people are being targeted based on those numbers. He grew up locally and served as a sheriff's deputy for Manatee County, but says he's long been afraid of racial profiling. You have to be very paranoid that you're not adequate, that, that at the end of the day, you have to prove who you are versus a, a, a white male. On Thursday, the NAACP says it sat down with Chief Bevan to relay the information. We reached out to the Bradenton Police Department for comment, but the department is not saying anything on the record for this story. And now Jones is calling for the numbers to be taken to the Florida Department of Law Enforcement for further investigation. No, Rome wasn't built in a day. A society wasn't built in a day, so it'll take some time to change the culture in the department. Um, but I think uh, we have a poor culture in Bradenton Police Department, and the community has known it for quite some time. We're just done sitting back. Uh, we're going to be aggressive, and we're going to start speaking out. Moving forward, the NAACP plans to make similar requests from the Manatee County Sheriff's Office and the Palmetto Police Department. In Bradenton, Kate Flexter, ABC 7, your Suncoast News. All right, thank you, Kate. We asked some of you to share your own thoughts on Facebook, and you did. Uh, Thomas Askins writes, maybe it's a disproportionate amount of arrests equal to a disproportionate number of crimes committed. Amy Lynn writes, I think that people need to look at the real demographics involved, income, ed education, employment. And Ron Schaefer, a man of many words, writing, this is nonsense. Police have arrested the suspect in the killing of two police officers in Palm Springs, California. Officials say John Felix was arrested this morning after a 12-hour standoff with police. The two officers responding, responded last night to a domestic disturbance call, but police say Felix refused to let the officers into the house and then shot them through a closed door. A third officer was wounded and is expected to recover. Police later converged on the neighborhood and surrounded the home before arresting Felix. Understand there's a lot of work to be done. There's several personnel still processing the scene. The 
majority of our answers to what occurred is at the scene. It's going to come down to investigators interpreting the scene to give us a better understanding of things unfolding. One of the slain officers, 63-year-old Jose Vega, was just two months away from his retirement. The other, Leslie Zarenbi, gave birth to her daughter four months ago. Pope Francis is elevating 17 Catholic priests to the rank of cardinal. The list includes three Americans who will officially be promoted on November 19th. They'll receive their new titles in a ceremony called consistory. The majority of the new cardinals are under the age of 80. They will become eligible to enter the conclave that will choose the pope's successor. Still to come here on ABC7, don't throw away that receipt. A weekend full of recalls from food to technology. We'll have the details coming up. What does it mean when New South Window says factory direct? It means we have a factory. It means we eliminate the middleman. It means you get an award-winning, energy-efficient window at factory direct prices. I'm consumer investigator Dale Cardwell. Replacing your windows will not just beautify your home, but save you big bucks on your energy bills. I've done the research. I've seen the factory. New South Window is my hands-down choice. New South Window. We manufacture. We install. We guarantee. Call now. Come experience the precision, performance, and power of the Ram 1500 during Ram Power Days at Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Built tough enough to help you conquer whatever the day may throw your way with all the comfort, gizmos, and gadgets you'll find in a luxury vehicle. And right now, get up to 20% off. That's up to $14,000 off a new Ram 1500. Better prices, bigger selection. Go to Sunset Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram in Sarasota. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. Hurricane Matthew made its mark, and now you can help those in its path. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. We'll learn about Shelterbox and how this Suncoast company is making a big difference in disaster relief. Our trends expert is having a baby any day now, and she shows us products for when baby comes home. Plus, creative cocktails are truly an art with Pangea Lounge and J-Pan Restaurant in the kitchen. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. My name is Haley. I have fragile X syndrome. I work with Chartwells at Einstein's at FAU. I like being up front and um, interacting with students. The students are very nice and very hungry. Having a job is a big ticket for independence. Hi, this is Dan Marino. When your business recruits people with disabilities, everybody wins. To find out how, go to disabilitieswork.com employflorida.com. Hurricane season is here, so when severe weather threatens, count on the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're armed with the most advanced weather technology. And focus on the Suncoast. The official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Download ABC7's free all-new news app at your app store today. Eight people are injured as the result of a multi-vehicle crash in Charlotte County. It happened on US 41 at the intersection of Easy Street. FHP says two cars were stopped at a red light in the center lane of US 41. A car driven by 18-year-old Kelsey Lanier failed to stop while approaching the light. FHP says neither she nor her three passengers were wearing seat belts at the time. The car rear-ended one of the vehicles, causing a ripple effect that eventually hit a third car. All eight people involved in the crash were taken to the hospital with injuries. One person is in critical condition. Dwayne Chapman is a man better known on TV as Dog the Bounty Hunter, but today in Bradenton, he was Dwayne the Christian as a guest speaker at the Source Church. Chapman delivered a personal message of redemption on Sunday during three services. He spoke about his mother taking him to services regularly, and he also discussed a difficult time in his own life as a former member of a gang and eventually serving five years in state prison after being convicted of first-degree murder. Fans say his words were eye-opening. Today was an exciting day for us at The Source. Um, you know, we had someone who has a real life story, someone that a lot of people can connect to. And I think what we saw with Dog the Bounty Hunter is that there's nothing that you can do that's too much for God. And it, he turned his life around. His wife Beth was also in the audience at today's event. She, event, she was sitting in the front row and cheering on her husband. Fans of the foliage at Selby Gardens can now also take in some music while checking out the topiary. 
The Garden's eclectic fall concert series kicks off today at their location south of downtown Sarasota. Dozens came out on day one to enjoy the musical stylings of the jazz band La Lucha from Tampa. This is La Lucha, they're the first in our concert series, and next week we have the Perlman Music Program, and so we have a quartet that will be performing for the first time together. The fall concert series will be held every Sunday through November 13th. Looks like a beautiful day out there, and if you go out next Sunday, it should be a, maybe a beautiful day as well, huh, Steve? We have gotten a long period where it's not going to get in the 90s again. I just looked at the European model, which will go out 240 hours or 10 days, and it stays in the 80s. Right. I like that, and you were just saying you like the 80s. Hey, I'm, I'm happy with anything but the <laughs> 90s right now, okay? We've had too much of that. I see no 90s in our future. <laughs> Take a look at how today's shaped up. Looking out over Sarasota Bay, what a gorgeous day it was. If you were lucky enough to be taking that bridge out to the island and enjoying our beaches or out on one of those boats, absolutely stunning weather. It's going to be even drier and milder on Monday and Tuesday. Across the state, the key to all this is the drier air mass that's been blown over us from a front that's now down uh, over the Florida Strait. And you can see dew points, the relative humidity is, is based on our dew point. And, and if it's in the 70s, it's kind of sticky, but in the 60s, now that's more comfortable. When it gets in the 50s, which it will do tomorrow morning in the early part of tomorrow, it will be very comfortable and it'll rebound slightly, but we're not going to have our dew points going back up into the 70s anytime soon either. So I think you're going to like the weather overall this week. And it's a beautiful evening in progress, too, across the Sunshine State with temperatures in the 70s in most places, but a nice cool 61 at Gainesville in the same at Tallahassee, Panama City, 64 degrees. In our viewing area, temperatures have cooled off into the 70s, and most places will get into the 60s overnight under the influence of that drier air. And the reason for that is that cold front that now stretches down through the Florida Strait. You can kind of see it there in this visual satellite picture before the sun went down. And we also see that the clouds associated with Hurricane Matthew have now moved offshore. That storm is out to sea, will no longer threaten anyone, and fortunately it's over. But not before dumping near record rainfall and record rainfall in some places through the Carolinas. When that moisture came in around the low, it was just pushed up slope in orographic lifting is the meteorological term. It was lifted by the terrain and wrung out all that moisture right along the sweet spot as it moved up toward the Piedmont. And multi-inch rainfalls down there, just unbelievable amounts, mainly east of I-95 here, 8 inches here. Florence, just uh, east of Florence, 11 inches. A lot of the rivers and streams across North Carolina are in critical flood stage and will take days, if not weeks, to come back down. Look at this, a foot of rain fell just to the south and east of Fayetteville, almost a foot to the northeast. Raleigh, Durham, the streets were flooded, uh, up to five to six inches of rain fell there. And it was also very heavy rainfall far away from the center of the hurricane, right across southern and central uh, Virginia. Richmond got almost eight inches of rain, and that stretched all the way into the Delmarva Peninsula. But the good news is high pressure is replacing, this is what's left of Matthew, across the region, and that means no more rain for them. The rivers and streams can subside. Here's our future cast showing a tropical storm Nicole also moving out to sea. No problem for us. We're in the dry northeasterly flow for the balance of this week. And this is a two day forecast right now. It looks like things are moistening up a little bit, but I don't think we're going to see any rain more than a 10 or 20 percent chance of rain uh, in earnest for the next several days. Here's our weather headlines then. We're calling for it to be milder and drier. It's going to be spectacular weather, at least tomorrow and Tuesday, and you're probably going to like it all week too, with low chances of rain or non-existent rain chances. Here's the forecast for the uh, open waters. Winds northeast 15 knots. Great boating weather. Seas 2 to 4 feet. Temperature at the beach will be 85. The water temperature 83. And our forecast for tonight. Ah, great night. Fair and milder. Low 66. It's been a long time since I've been able to give that kind of forecast. And the seven-day outlook shows we will be just about as cool for Monday night into Tuesday. Just 10, 20 percent chance of rain for the next several days as we stay in the 80s, just like you like it, Adam. Sounds good to me, yeah. Anything out of the 90s with the 80s and less rain, I can work with that. In other news, good news for anyone who is worried that their Samsung Galaxy Note 7 phone might catch fire. Verizon and Sprint announcing Friday that they will let customers trade in their device for a completely different phone. This move comes just a few days after a phone believed to be a replacement Note 7 caught fire on a board uh, on board a Southwest Airlines flight. Samsung launched its new Note 7 smartphone in August.
missed. A few weeks later, customers started reporting their phones were catching fire. While charging, excuse me, catching fire while charging in September, Samsung launched a global recall program for two and a half million devices. And Nestle is recalling some of its drumstick ice cream treats due to a possible health risk. Nestle receiving positive test results for listeria on the surfaces of some equipment. The FDA reports that 16 count variety pack and 24 count vanilla packs were manufactured in Bakersfield, California. No other production codes, sizes, or varieties of drumstick products are affected by this recall. And the Kraft Heinz company is recalling more than 950 pounds of launchable products. The USDA reports the ham and American cracker stackers are misbranded with undeclared allergens. The products contain wheat and soy, which are not declared on the product label. Coming up next on ABC7 Sports, stick around. Hurricane season is here, and Suncoast weather can go from this to this in seconds. So when severe weather threatens, count on the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're armed with the most advanced weather technology so that we can bring you storm warnings faster and with more detail than ever before. Plus, we focus on the Suncoast and track storms right down to your neighborhood. On air, online, and on your mobile device, turn to the official Suncoast Storm Team at ABC7. We're here for you. Thanks to my volunteer, I am a better reader. Thanks to my volunteer, math seems simple now. Thanks to my volunteer, I discovered new career goals. I'm a volunteer for Sarasota County Schools, so I know I can make a difference. And you can too. Give an hour, change a life. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. I'm Stephanie Roberts on Suncoast View. Hurricane Matthew relief efforts from a local company, plus products for when baby comes home, artsy and creative cocktails, and J-Pan restaurants. Monday at 4 on Suncoast View. Christmas Tradition by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Make your holidays sparkle with style. Browse our amazing showroom, cute collectible cottages, and beautiful Christmas displays. Find the inspiration, selection, and quality you need to deck the halls merry and bright. Christmas Traditions also features the area's largest selection of quality pre-lit Christmas trees. Every size, shape, and color, and plenty of decorations to make your home shine for the holidays. Christmas Traditions by LuxArt Silks, where more is merrier. Visit us on New 301, just a quarter mile north of University Parkway. At Sunset Subaru in Sarasota, we make sure you get the most for your money. More years, more miles, more 2016 IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus winners than any other brand. And right now, you can lease the most award-winning small SUV on the planet, a new 2016 Subaru Forester for just $209 a month. Complimentary maintenance included. At Sunset Subaru in Sarasota, get more for your money. Go to Sunset Subaru in Sarasota. Now, sports. The New England Patriots won three of their first four games without the help of their superstar quarterback Tom Brady, but today in Cleveland, he reminded fans why he's worth the wait. Brady done with a four-game suspension left over from Deflategate. First game in over a month, but it hardly showed. Brady threw for 406 yards with three touchdowns, completing 28 of his 40 pass attempts against who else but my winless Browns. The Patriots crushed Cleveland 33-13, to and in the postgame, Brady says he could have been better. I think there was plenty of rust out there, so um, and I could do better in a lot of areas, and um, you know, I think it was a good win today, um, but it was one game, and like I said, 4 and one's a good place to be for us, and we got a long road ahead, so we're going to try to keep building. It's Tom Brady's eighth career game with over 400 yards passing. He'll take on the Cincinnati Bengals next Sunday. And in Miami, another quarterback having a different day. Ryan Tannehill, a rough one, two interceptions, and a lot of time spent on the turf. Six sacks today, including that one by Derek Morgan. First quarter, Marcus Mariota in the red zone fakes the handoff, and he'll go for the corner untouched. Titans take a 7-0 lead. Then in the second quarter, the Titans punting the ball away to Jakeem Grant, and the rookie looking to be a spark for this Miami team. He gets to the edge, turns it upfield, and after some nifty footwork on the sidelines, breaks free for a 74-yard punt return. It's Grant's first career touchdown, and it ties the game at 7. 
But here was the dagger. Game tied at 14, less than a minute in the half. Mariota drops back and finds Delani Walker for the go-ahead touchdown. Tannehill receiving boos from his home crowd as early as the second quarter, and the Dolphins drop to 1-4 and four with a loss to Tennessee. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers will wait one more day to take on the reigning NFC South champs Carolina Panthers for the first time this season. The Panthers will be without MVP quarterback Cam Newton Monday as he follows concussion protocol from the week before. Derek Anderson will get the start in his place. Anderson went 2-0 against the Bucs the last time he filled in for Newton back in 2014. The second-place Buccaneers could improve to 500 in the division with a win in Carolina. Kickoff is at 8.30 on ESPN. More than 100 professional BMX riders are on the Sun Coast for the Union Cyclist International Finals. The sport is described as sprint cycling over a specifically, specially prepared dirt track like the one at the Sarasota Youth Complex. It's the last of five stops around the globe for their World Cup. It's one of the top racing series in the world and brings fans from all over the globe to Sarasota's new track. I think you guys have got a great facility here. Uh, really cool to be in Sarasota. We uh, survived Hurricane Matthew. Today in Sarasota, the organization crowned its World Cup champion for the season. More to come here on ABC7. Stay with us. It's time to upgrade your favorite news app. Now, ABC7's My Suncoast News app is better than ever with a dynamic brand new design that's faster and easier to use. Stay connected anytime, anywhere with breaking news and weather alerts, video on demand, and live streaming of your Suncoast News. Download our free My Suncoast News app on your mobile device at your app store. ABC7's all new My Suncoast News app. Just another way we're here for you. Powered by the I Associates, providing sight for life. ABC 7 News at 7, weeknights. They say good things come to those that wait. Well, you've waited long enough. You deserve to feel fabulous in your fashionable new Fiat 500X from Alfa Romeo Fiat in Sarasota. Boldly innovative, seductively stylish. Fiat gives you everything you'd expect from a capable utility vehicle, like a spacious interior and advanced safety systems, designed and built like a sexy little sportster. Don't wait any longer. You deserve to feel fabulous. Get a new Fiat at Alfa Romeo Fiat of Sarasota. Gold fever has once again swept the nation, and everyone is rushing to Florida to strike it doubly rich. Introducing the $5 million Gold Rush Doubler. We're doubling cash prizes for over $752 million in payouts. And 36 prizes from $1 million to $5 million. The Florida Gold Rush is on. The Florida Lottery. Just imagine. Time for a look at the weekend box office. One new movie easily topped the competition. David Daniel has the report. You're going to destroy the whole roof? Mom, we have to replace the chimney with a slide for when the storks deliver my baby brother. The animated family no, film Storks crazy. finished in fifth place, grossing eight and a half million dollars. The Magnificent Seven moved down a notch to fourth place on ticket sales of 9.2 million. 11.8 million dollars gave Deepwater Horizon a third place finish in its second weekend. Peculiars have been persecuted through the ages. Hence, we live in places like this. Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children lost the top spot, settling for second place and $15 million. Your, your, your wife hit me on Friday night. The thriller The Girl on the Train easily won the weekend, debuting in first place with $24.7 million. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. A lot of good movies. Uh, I did get a chance to see Magnificent Seven. I liked it, but uh, this is not the week to sit in a theater, is it, Steve? I cannot wait till see Guardians of the Galaxy coming out. That's my <laughs> favorite all-time movie. I, I like it. I like it. I did not expect that. I'm not going to lie. We are going to have a great week ahead with temperatures in the 80s. Overnight lows tonight in the 60s. It is really fun to bring a forecast like this after the hot and humid summer we have had. Yeah, it'll be a nice break. Nice break for everyone who's been dealing with 90 and rain the last couple of days. Thanks for joining us tonight. We'll see you guys in the morning. Have a good one.